Take me back to when football all started for you, back when you were a little bit of a kid. When did you know you were going to be good? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> my dad, he said he knew I was going to be good since I was four years old. He said on my my fourth birthday, that's the age in Pittsburgh where you could play like tackle football. He said the day I woke up, he said the first words I said was, I could play football now. <laughs> and he knew, he said he knew from there like I was going to be special. But he always made me play other sports too. Like before, before he let me play baseball, I had to play football, mm -hmm. and then I had to play basketball, and then so on. So like sports had always been around this. So I felt like I always had the best chance in whatever sport I focused on. So in high school, when you became the you know super athlete that you were, what made you just decide on West Virginia to be the school you wanted to go to? Um, pretty much it was just it was it just felt the most at home. Honestly, it was far enough away from home where. I could stay away from the trouble, but it was also close enough to where my family and whoever wanted to come support me could come come to my games and come see me. Take me through your first two years there. You succeeding on the field, you know, these big dreams of becoming this NFL player. Just talk to me about that time in West Virginia. Uh, it was amazing, honestly. When I first got there, it was kind of hard because I, I was a freshman and I was like on the, on the edge of red shirt and, and playing because I had older guys in front of me like mm -hmm. Drayvon Henry. He plays for uh, New York Guardians now, and he was like an All-American at West Virginia. So coming in, I was supposed to be, I was never supposed to play. And then they actually moved me to corner within what, the, the second game of the season? Moved me to corner. I played corner for the first time in my life when I got to college for the first couple games. And then as the season went on, injuries happened, and then they moved me back to free safety and then moved Drayvon down to the other safety. So it was like my first year was like ups and downs, and then I finally started to make plays, and then it just got better from there. So tell me about the academic situation where you had to be, became ineligible and got kicked out of school. Um, so it started off, it, it was a big mistake on my hand, first of all. But it started off as I was getting help with my work. I was getting help with my classes during the season. I had all online classes. So a girl, she was helping me here and there with a few of my classes. And then. As the season went on, I got lazy, I would be honest with you. I got lazy, and then she, I asked her to do the classes for me. Mm -hmm. So once the season went on, she ended up doing, this, doing one of my classes, season ended, and we got to spring ball. So when we get to spring ball, she, I asked her to do an assignment for me when I go home for his funeral, because someone had close to me had passed. Mm -hmm. So I went home, and I asked her to do an assignment for me. Once, once she did the assignment, she turned it in, and it got red flagged because mm -hmm. It was it was during it was first of all it was during the team meeting even though I wasn't there mm -hmm. it still got red flagged because it was during like a team a team period so once once it got red flagged I had to go to court with uh, student conduct and then all that and then they ruled on expelling me from school so for you how was that time I bet that was something that what were your parents saying you know a tough time for sure uh, at the time I really I, my my dad knew but. My mom, she didn't because she was going through her thing with cancer at the time, mm -hmm. and we had just found that out. So like, I really didn't want to tell her because I felt like that might really kill her. That was some, that's something that would break her heart. Me being kicked out of school. So honestly, it was I really didn't talk much to my mom about it. She didn't find out until I actually got kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. And my father, he was just he was just there. He was just there to support me no matter what. He's just he's like we're gonna handle it. We're gonna figure something out and we're going to make sure you're straight regardless of what happened, you know. Is that the darkest time you ever had been through? Yeah, definitely, because I really didn't know what I was going to do. My first my first thoughts were they're not, they're not going to kick me out of school. Like, I never did nothing. Mm -hmm. I never did nothing. I don't even have no record at the school <laughs> but a parking ticket, you know, you feel me? Yeah. So I'm thinking, like, they're not going to kick me out of school. They're going to give me a chance. Like, I don't even mind sitting out the season. Sure. Just, just let me stay in school. That's my whole thing. My whole thing about it was let me stay in school, not even the football court. I mean, football, I can handle it later, but mm -hmm. just let me be in school, you know? Yeah. And then that, once they kicked me out, it was like, wow. Like, I did all this for y'all. Like, I broke, mm -hmm. my, I broke my neck for y'all all, all mm -hmm. this time. Like, I stayed out of trouble, all this, but you're, going, you're not going to give me a chance. And what really killed me was it was the fact that there were – I wasn't the only player, you know? So like mm -hmm. me not being the only player, like I'm I'm the one, I'm one of the guys who y'all say y'all can depend on, but you're not giving me a chance, you know? Mm -hmm. Like there's, there was there was 13 other guys and only two of us were removed from school, you know? So it was like, that's a slap in the face. Like mm -hmm. you're not gonna, you're not gonna give me a chance 
and you're giving regular students a chance, you're giving other players a chance, and then when we come back to it, I'm hearing they're letting everything go with everybody else. So it's like, wow, that's a slap in the face for real because y'all gave everyone else a chance, but y'all couldn't give me a chance. Y'all wanted to make an example out of me. When I clearly learned my lesson, I, I, I knew, I, knew mm -hmm. I admitted to being wrong, you know? I never denied it throughout the whole process. I just... You owned up to everything. Yeah, I owned up to it, and y'all still removed me from school. So it was like, it just really, really was a like sap on the face, you know? So what did you do from that time when you were kicked out of school until you got drafted into the XFL? Uh, throughout the process, I was still, before I got kicked out, I was still practicing with the team. So a lot of people didn't know what was going on. So majority of the time, I was still practicing with the team until I, I even played in the spring game. Mm -hmm. So it happened, I got kicked out probably a week after the spring game. So a lot of people didn't know what was going on. So once once they did kick me out, I ended up moving back home. Okay. Now I'm moving back home. I'm working out for a little minute, trying to trying to just trying to stay on top of things because I don't know what my next move is, honestly. Because my mother, she wants me to go back to school, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, I just I'm I'm hearing from the XFL and now they're giving me another choice. Mm -hmm. So now now it's me and my dad, and we're really we're trying to decide what's better for what's the best choice for just the family and not even me personally because at the time I'm not even thinking about mm -hmm. myself going back to school I'm still thinking of my mom you know mm -hmm. that's my first instinct my first instinct is all right well school's over I could go I go get paid but in her head she's thinking that's not the way to do it because mm -hmm. she's still upset about school kind of mm -hmm. so she wants me to go back to school first of all so it was like I was I was in between working out trying to figure out what i want to do so it was a like it was it was it was kind of dark and it was kind of like at the same time because it's it was it was eye-opening for me like it was me learning i had to learn learn some lessons at that time now you talk a lot about your mom um what exactly was she going through at that time and i understand you said she just suffered a stroke recently yeah so she had so first it had first started off with she had a stroke she has first had her first had a stroke and then that's when we went home. She came back home, and then she suffered another stroke. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we went into the hospital when they found out she has cancer. She had a colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So once we found out she had colon cancer, it was like it was a whole a, a big. It was big on us because we're like, we first we're trying to get over the stroke, and she's not working. She can't. She can't talk. She mm -hmm. can't write. So now she's getting back to. We're trying to get her back to herself. And then when she found out she had cancer, it really broke her down. You know, because now she's thinking she can die. You mm -hmm. know, that's the, that's her first thing on her head, and we're trying to and we're trying to motivate her to just stay positive. Like it's not like you just got to get your treatment. You mm -hmm. know, things like that. So it was like it was a lot. It was it's a lot going on. And what year was this? What what year were you in college or high school? Uh, this is this is college. It okay. was like This was this spring. Last okay. Spring. Last spring. So. You got the opportunity to get drafted into the XFL, and you also found out that they would help you pay to continue going to school to get your education. How excited did that make your mom? Uh, it was. It made her kind of excited, but she was still iffy about everything because it's a first year league. So mm -hmm. she she used to she used to the used to the traditional way of everything. Yeah. You know, go to college and then get drafted. Mm -hmm. So in her head, she's still thinking that's not the way. But as me and my dad started to break it down and talk to her about it, it was like. This is the best decision. Like right? mm -hmm. this is the best decision for all of us, and not just me. Cause she, she's thinking in her head. She don't want me to be thinking about her. Make my decisions based off her. She wants me to live my life. You know, that's how. That's just how my parents always been. They never. They always let me make my own decisions. So she wanted me to live my life off of myself and don't think about her. So until we actually broke it down to her, like this is just the best decision. They're gonna let me go to school. Mm -hmm. They're gonna pay me. So we're gonna be able to financially stay being financially stable at the moment you know mm -hmm. and be able to help her out her getting to watch you now succeed also go to school continue to get your education but play football potentially at the highest level that there is you got an interception this past weekend you said to the camera this is for you mom i love you <clears throat> tell me about what this means to be able to bring joy to her you know and all the tough times she's going through oh uh, it means it means the world you know talking to my mom she don't we don't get to talk as much as she, as much as I want to. But when I do talk to her, she don't do nothing but cry. Like she's just so happy and excited. I miss her so much. Like 
I can't wait. I'm trying to figure out a time where I could just go home for a day and go see her because that would mean the world to her. She, I know she missed me so much, and I miss her too. Now, you probably learned a lot through the situation and everything yeah, that you definitely. went through. Being how blessed were you to have the XFL and the opportunity that you got to be able to continue your education but also do the thing that you love? Uh, very blessed because in the XFL, I'm learning a lot of things. Like, I got a lot of guys mentoring me, like uh, Will Hill. He's one of the guys who who's took me under his wing and showed me a lot of things, you know, on on and off the field because he's been through similar situations with his father in the NFL, you know, having to lead the NFL to take care of his father for similar re reasons. So like the way he the way he's taken me under his wing and taught me things and the coaches, the coaching wise, I'm learning way faster than everyone else. I know more things. It's just it's a it's a blessing, really. Do you ever sit back and think like, man, wow. I'm the only guy that's eligible to go to the NFL draft here in the next month. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I, I mean, I've been starting, I'm starting to embrace it, you know, especially on the field because a lot of the guys, a lot of the guys we play against, they like to talk a lot of stuff, but they really don't know, like, where, where I'm from and what I got, what I got going for me. So I, I start, I'm starting to embrace it and starting to take a head on, you know, just trying to, just trying to make the best of it. And you're a guy that plays with a lot of passion and emotion, I feel like, when I, when I watch you play. You're very animated at times. How would you best describe your personality on the football field? Uh, I, try to, I try to just play, play out of my mind but in control, you know? Uh -huh. Control but out of my mind because when you're playing, when you're playing at a high level, you got to bring attitude. You got to bring it all. Like, when you're, when you're out there, it's got to have a different nasty to you, you know? It's different than when you're just out here, out here talking to people, you know. Because on the field, if you be too nice, people won't take advantage, mm -hmm. you know. They won't try to run over you, you know. It's just not a friendly sport. You gotta, you gotta bring it. <laughs> you gotta be a dog, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, when we talk about all this and what your future may hold, how hard is it to just lock in on the moment right now and not think about the big picture and how, in a couple of months, you'll be able to financially support basically your entire family and do what you need to do. Um. Just that lesson from West Virginia taught me, just stay humble and stay focused on now and the main thing. And that's just, just stay focused on what you got to do. Because when you worry about everything else, like how I, was, how I was trying to focus on only football when school was keeping me playing football. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it taught me like, you got to focus on the, the, what's, what's, what's right now and not focus on the future because what's going, what you, when you focus on what's now, that's when you get to the get to what you want to get to, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have to be the guy that, that thinks about the future as we're sitting here talking about this. When you play against these guys in the XFL, the guys who used to be in the NFL, do you think to yourself, I belong in the NFL, man? Oh, of course. I always I always thought I belonged in the NFL. You know, I work I work so hard. I've been playing football since I was four years old. I always felt like I was always one of the best guys. It's just you know, I feel like everyone, a lot of people have doubted me, you know? Like, it's, I've been doubted a lot in my life. Like, people always overlook me because I, don't, I haven't always had all the hype everyone mm -hmm. else had, but I always felt like I was always one of the best guys and I could compete with anybody, no matter who you are, whenever, whenever the time you could pick it, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> Explain your dad throughout all this situation, what you're going through. You said he's been there step by step throughout this journey. I think you handed him a game ball after yeah. one game. What has he said throughout this entire process? He just always just tell me he loved me and he got my back no matter what. He, I, that I could always depend on him. That's always, and that's always how it's been. Honestly, my dad, he always, he's always been my best friend. Like no lie, my dad, he he don't miss. He he's never missed a game. He don't miss nothing. My dad comes to everything. Like my dad always been my best friend. He picks me up from. He always picked me up from school. Take me to school. <laughs> No matter if he's living with us or not at the time, he's going to make sure he's there for me and not miss nothing. Coach me, mm -hmm. everything. That's my, that's my dog, my best friend, <laughs> I swear. And what is he telling you about your mom? What's he saying your mom is saying when she's at home watching the games or you do something good? Like, what's his message about what she's thinking? His message is do it for her. You know, just do it for her. Don't worry about nothing else. Just play ball and just make sure you got everything handled for her, you know? Mm -hmm. He don't say too much. He just be... He, you know, he just love the game. He like he like the hype of it. <laughs> and if your mom could talk to you right now and tell you one thing about the career that you're going through right now, what do you think she would say throughout this journey? She's proud of me. That's all she says. She's proud of me. She said every time I call her, she's proud of me. She's just happy, happy for me, 
and just me. She's just happy for me, period. You know, she don't, my mom tries to not make it about herself. She's just as humble she is, as she is. I mean, it just, she always tells me she's proud of me. That's, that's the most she can get out, and that's what she, she just stands by that every time. Does it make you stronger as a man and as a football player watching your mom go through what she's going through and her remaining so positive? Yes, definitely. I definitely feel like it made me stronger because it t it's it's teaching me to just to, you know, stay 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 humble. You know, just don't always think nothing can happen to you because it can always something can always happen. Like no one in a million years, I would have never thought my mom would have cancer. Like and been through all the things she's been through. Like going from one day she's completely healthy to the next day, everything's just going downhill. You know, like mm -hmm. it's all it's taught it's taught me to keep grounded and like nothing can. Nothing cannot happen to you. It, everything's possible. And so what are the steps for your mom right now? How is she doing? Um, is she on the road to recovery? Do they expect her to get over everything? Um, so right now, she's, she, we just, she's just been checked back into the hospital a few days ago. She had a, um, a seizure when she was out shopping. I tried to give her a few dollars to go shopping, mm -hmm. get back on her feet, because she'd been, like, she been moving around a lot, so, like getting better, you know? Mm -hmm. so, but she had a seizure the other day, and now she's back in the hospital. But she's getting better. We just gotta get her weight back up. You mm -hmm. know, they said cancer it kills your taste buds. She says a lot of things taste like metal, so like her taste buds are down. So right now we're trying to get her to get her weight back up so she can finish her treatments. All right. The final question I have for you: When you hear your name get called in the NFL draft, or you know you sign with the team, what's one of the first things you think you'll do with your money? Probably get my mom a house. Why is it important? To, why is it important to do that? Uh, because it's just it's just moving my family. It's it, it was it's kind of an investment too. You know, a house is something you can keep forever. You know, it's like it's a it's a it's a great investment, and it's just get, keeping my family safe, keeping them keeping them okay, making sure they're all right. You know, ultimate family man, huh? Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Kenny Robinson appreciate of the Battle Hawks.